Welcome to this Onshape tutorial. Today we're going to look at the sheet metal features in Onshape and we're looking at these designs in the bottom left hand corner. So we're going to look at creating uh, sheet metal designs which could be rolled, so basically the use of uh, arcs like this. And we're also going to look at how we can use the extrude okay, options to create designs like this which are cylindrical and this can then obviously be flattened out for manufacturing purposes uh, if we are going to create that using a sheet metal process. We have a number of tabs down the bottom. The one that's active at the moment gives us a quick overview of the different activities. And if you click on the icons here for YouTube, you can get access to the YouTube tutorials. And as you can see, there's a range of different activities, starting off with the easy one there and working around okay to this master activity. You can also click on this tab here. This gives you an overview to different resources and tutorials. And if you click on the YouTube one here, it gives you access to all the Onshape tutorials that I've created. We've also got in this okay document, okay, an example here of the okay model we're gonna have a go at creating. And we've also got a second example as well. So what we're going to do now is have a go at creating this. So we're going to drag this back up. So we could go back in time here and get an idea of uh, how this was created. So we've got a simple sketch. Let's have a look at the dimensions. If we zoom out slightly. What we've got is the, the origin. And we've got a 50 millimeter circle. We then created a line down here, which is essentially 150 millimeters in length. Okay, and it's 75 in the center and 15 down there. So we can copy this first. So we click on a plus, click on create part studio, wait a few seconds for that to uh, load. I'm going to right click on it and type in okay, tutorial one and just click to confirm that. So I'm going to click sketch, front work plane. N for normalize, I'll click on your cube. I'm going to go for circle, C for circle, I'll select it at the top, drag this out, and 50. I'm going to use a line, so L for line, or again, select it at the top. I'm just going to drag this out here. I'm going to make sure it's a horizontal line, and then I'm going to use the dimension tool. I'm going to dimension it from that center to there, 15. Okay, and you've got the dimension tool up here in case it's not selected. And we've got the total length of 150, if I can remember that rightly. And then it was 75, okay, from one of the ends to the center, like that. Okay, that's the easiest way to dimension it. Ooh, what's 78? 75, okay. There we go. Right, what we're gonna do now, just make sure I've done that right. Okay, so, under 50, 50, yep. And then we can come back here. What I'm going to do is use the trim, and I'm just going to trim you know, those two lines. So we've got this okay, profile here. We could give this a name. So we could say, I'll just call it profile, if I could spell. There we go. And just confirm that. And we can have a look at that and think, right, okay, yeah, that's fine. And then we'll have a look what we did next. So I created that sketch. And then I've uh, come in and created a sheet metal model. And let's have a look at how we did that. So we've used, it, we've used the extrude, we've selected the actual sketch, and we've got 30 millimeters symmetric, so that's splitting it either side, so 15 millimeters either side. Of course, if you wanted that bigger, we could drag it there. Okay, I'll type in the size. Thicknesses, one and a half mil. Okay, radius, just matching up with that. And I've left, okay, these K factor as those values, as the standard values. And I haven't got any corner relief, so anything on this design, so it doesn't matter, okay, what is selected there. So the key thing, okay, is these, okay, values up here, and plus, okay, using an extrude. So if we come to what we've just created, all right, what we're not going to do is just try and extrude that, okay? We're going to go into sheet metal mode and use the extrude in sheet metal, that's important. So sketches of curves, 
we can select these individually like this and you can see what it starts to do. So this is quite powerful, okay, in creating some quite complex sheet metal parts. It's going blind at the moment, so one direction. Of course, I can flip that, okay, either side. But I'm going to do this symmetric and I want it 30 millimeters in total 15, okay, either side. I'm going to keep these as this size. Of course, I could type in, okay, a different one there if I wanted it thicker, but because of the overall size, I think one and a half millimeters is, okay, a better option there. And again, I've left the K factor, okay, down here, the minimal gap, all this is uh, standard, all right? And then we could confirm that. And of course, I can even um, give it a name. So I can say, for example, I could call that extrude, okay, sheet or whatever I want to call it. All right, so we've actually created that. And as we've seen before, if we go into here, it gives us the flat profile of that on a net. And if we hover over certain aspects on here, you can see it's highlighted okay on the actual model or again if i highlight it on here i can actually see it on there so that's a good way of so especially if you do something quite complex is to work out okay what okay features are on here in relation to the net so it's a good way of uh you know visualizing that in your mind so that's the first bit done we're then going to come back to here and just confirm that what I did then is I created a nice sketch on one side. Now let's have a look, zoom in on here. So we've got this slot and let's have a look. So we've got blah, 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 blah. So a 25 millimeter line to start with. It's 10 from the side, 15 from there. So see if my memory can remember that one. So let's go into here. Let's go sketch on that surface. Press N for normalize. Of course, I can spin it around using these and I can zoom in. So we're gonna start off with a straight line and I'm just gonna, let's have a look. Is it halfway? Yeah, it's 15. So remember it's 30 millimeters, so I can snap it, okay, to the origin like so. So grab that like that. So it's already snapped halfway, so I don't need to type that in. I can type in this size here and I'm just going to put these dimensions in using D for dimension, not selecting at the top. Like that. And let's have a look at those because, again, my memory is rubbish. So 25 millimeters and 10 millimeters. So it's good to have something to reference against, especially if you've got a poor memory. And then, yeah, we've got 15. So we're going to create this, and it's got a radius. Oh, sorry, a diameter, sorry, not a radius, a diameter of 10. And the way we do that is we come up to here and we click on slot. We select that. We can click to confirm and then zoom out. I'm just going to double click and change that to 10. So we've got a nice slot, okay, in this design or sketch. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to rotate that. I like to do so I can visually see, okay, what it's doing. Yeah, that's just the way I like doing things. So I'm going to click on extrude. It's already selected that profile because the sketch is active. If you've saved your sketch and it you know comes to this point here, you click on remove because we created a solid. We want to remove it from that solid and we want to click on that profile there. It's going blind and it's saying 25 mil. All right, so that is cutting all the way through. I could confirm that. All right, so that, by doing that, I could also use sort of up to face and select that on that. So that's a quick way of doing it. And then you've also got, obviously, when we've learned about extrudes before, we've got all sorts of ones here. So we can say up to vertex and I can select, okay, if it lets me, there we go, that point. So depending on how you could do it, you could do it blind. Okay, you could go up to face, vertex, or even through all. And you'll still get the same result. We don't want to add uh, any offset. We don't want it to go in a second direction. We just want it to do a single direction. Uh, we're merging it in a moment with the main part. So if I had a number of parts here, this is where I could select them individually, or I can take that to say go through everything. So if I've got a number of parts I want it to go through. And like I said, we don't want a draft or anything like that. 
So we are good to go on that one. I could give this a name and then convert that. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is, if I check this, is to mirror it onto the other side. So I create a sketch, I've cut that through there, and then I've mirrored it, okay, onto the other side. So I don't have to waste my time drawing it, and of course, if I update this side, the other side will update, okay? If you want this to be independent, you would have to create that again and sketch it out. But because I want both to be the same, a mirror is suitable. So let's go back to here. And you can see on the okay profile and net, you can see it is on that side there. Okay. And then we can go back out. So let's go up to mirror. What we're going to mirror, we're not going to mirror parts because we don't want to mirror the entire part. We'll try feature first, see if this works. So we're going to go slot, mirror plane, right hand plane. So it's coming up with an error, okay? So sometimes when you're mirroring things, it might be worth, rather than mirroring the feature, okay, is to use face mirror. So what faces? So let's have a look. So I've got that one, that one. Okay, you can see it's sort of appearing there, but it's not complete. I could click that one. Use your mouse. Okay, click that one. And then happy days, it's mirrored it onto the other side. So sometimes it's worth using, okay, face mirror rather than uh, feature. And I can give that a name if I wanted to. I could just leave it as mirror like that and confirm it. And there we go. We got those two features in there. And again, if we click over here, Again, that is updated, and if I select any of this here, you'll see it will be on the model or vice versa, so I can visualize that again. All right, so what we've looked at there is quite quite simple, but we've you know created, um, in a way, quite complex, okay, sheet metal design there. So what we've learned there, okay, if we quicker go through, is we've, we've drawn a single sort of uh, sketch profile, we then use the extrude okay, function within uh, the sheet metals to extrude that. And then we've applied a particular feature here and mirrored it on the other side. And that's all okay, updated on this design. And like I've said before, it is important okay, to apply any features like slots, holes, and all that kind of things. Or if you're gonna trim certain aspects of the sheet metal, is that you apply all that before okay, you go in here and click finish. And I select that and say finished. And it will update like that. Because if I now okay add any holes to this, okay, it will not appear okay on that sheet metal. And if I quickly show you, if I just go up to there, click sketch, what I'm gonna do is just draw a random sort of hole here. Okay, I will dimension it. So we'll say five millimeters in from each edge, and it's five millimeters in. Okay, diameter. So I've created that, and then I go extrude again. I want to remove it, and we'll go, we'll just say through all for now, it's fine, it's through all. So you might be thinking, hey, excellent, good, good, good. But if you look on here, okay, it is not appearing on here, because remember, it is after the finish in the timeline. So if you want to now transfer that from there, onto the actual net of a flat sheet is we'll drag the sketch up first okay pass that still not appearing and watch as soon as i select this here it will appear over there so as soon as i select to drag it okay and let go all right bang it's appeared okay over here all right that's just because i've got it i'm looking at a certain obviously angle there like that okay um and that's it so that so we've done quite a lot in that. So what you need to do is obviously follow those um, stages, have a go, and then if you feel as though you want to edit the model and try a few things out, then uh, please have a go at that as well. Thanks for watching, and if you found this content helpful, please click like and subscribe, and also check out any other resources and videos created using the links in the description. I'll see you on the next one.